needed. If you're single, ask for their phone number. Just kidding. Just kidding. It's, it's kind of scary. Well, I'm honored today to uh, preach alongside uh, one of the pastors here at City. Pastor Chad has been here over 30 years. And he knew me when I wasn't living for God. And so him still being here is a miracle. <laughs> He's a great part of the team, great pillar in the church. And he and I were having lunch about two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago. And uh, he was just encouraging me. I try to get with these guys as much as I can. And we have a great team here. We've got about 22 uh, pastoral leaders in our church. And I love working with every one of them. We have elders too. And um, he was encouraging me that day. And I said, dude, you're dropping bombs on me. We've got to preach this together. Because this is good stuff. And so we're going to do it a tag team. Chad, go get the people. Uh, for, again, I'm just uh, you know, thankful for the opportunity to be here today and, and just to share with Pastor David and, and just to encourage everyone today. As Pastor David said, I've you know, been here uh, you know, a little over 30 years. Uh, you know, City Church has been my family. Um, I've, I've, I've just loved the, uh, you know, the, our, our leadership and growing up, you know, our youth group. We knew that God was on the move. We knew God was real. When we saw Pastor David come back, changed. <laughs> Miracles. I'm, I mean. God exists. Yeah. <laughs> our, 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 our youth group just went through a, dr a dramatic funny. transformation after Pastor David came back. And so Pastor David's always been an inspiration for me. Um, just been very thankful for his friendship. Uh, you know, being a brother to me, really, in a lot of ways, and, and a leader. And so, um, you know, I've, I've met my wife here. I've been married, married 11 years. We've got four uh, wonderful kids, and just so thankful for just the opportunity to be here and serve. It's awesome. If you have your Bibles or your phones and you want to turn, you can turn to Philippians chapter 4. Usually on this weekend we do a, a verse out of one of the Gospels um, of Jesus speaking. Uh, but today, when he and I were just going over this, I just felt like these verses were just more accurate for the message. And we're going to read uh, chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. If you don't have your Bible or phone, just follow me on the screen. You're more than welcome to do that. Uh, here's what the Apostle Paul said. By the Holy Spirit's unction. He said, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. How many have received that peace today? Notice verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. That's easier said than done. But today... I. Uh, he and I want to preach on a message entitled, The Peace-Filled Life. How many want a peace-filled life? I know I do. And I believe Jesus will help us. So, Father, thank you for this message today. And help us to articulate it with your love and grace. And help it to penetrate every one of us. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Well, God has, his intent for us is to experience the peace I just read. The peace that passes our ability and it guards our heart and mind. Every one of us in this room and online, we all want a peace-filled life. And, and yet you and I are attacked or we're tempted to not have a peace-filled life in many different ways. Today, what uh, the, uh, uh, the one area we want to focus on that Pastor Chad really encouraged me with is the area that is for every one of us that we all deal with, no matter our status or stage of life, rich or poor, it doesn't matter, male or female, Every one of us are tempted with discontentment. The Bible says contentment with godliness is great gain. But we are uh, tempted to have discontentment. Discontentment steals our purpose and our passion. And discontentment causes us to be disappointed and to really be filled with wounds and hurts. Really, it hinders a peace-filled life, and it hinders our growth. And so in our message today, we want to talk about how uh, you and I have certain actions that we can carry out when we're under discontentment, and then the resolutions that we can take to break that off of our life, because it's really ministered to me. So when you and I are dealing with discontentment, Pastor Chad's going to read the definition of it, and then he'll share what's the first action that you and I typically do when we're under discontentment. So that one of the definitions of discontentment is having a, a restless, uh, a restless craving, um, a, a desire for something that one doesn't have. So 
out of that, I believe there's, there comes a, um, at some point in time in our life, a, a, a dissatisfaction. A, dis a dissatisfaction in something that we're doing, um, something that you know, we were once maybe passionate about. And so through that dissatisfaction, we start to grasp. We start to grasp and grab and seek for things that we think will fulfill that longing and that desire. And so we have that restlessness in, within us. Yes. And we might not be able to pinpoint that one thing that we don't have. But as we're doing that, we're just reaching out. We're trying to figure out maybe, maybe it's this new relationship. Maybe that will make me happy. Maybe that will fulfill that longing and that desire that I have. Um, maybe that new job. Maybe that new house. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe even getting married. Maybe that'll, maybe that'll solve the problems. Um, maybe doing, you know, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't solve all the problems. <laughs> it's great, but it doesn't solve the problems. Amen. Can I get an amen, amen for all the married people? Some of you are like, eh. <laughs> Um, but again, just, just grasping, seeking out. So we think maybe, maybe that drug, maybe that new drink, yeah. um, you know, maybe, that, maybe that pornography, maybe that website will fulfill that desire that we have, that longing that we're, that we're feeling. So good. And it's easy for us, no matter what that would be, to reach out and grasp for something that's easily accessed in our life. Isn't it easy to reach for what we can control versus trusting God who's in control? to do a deep work within us, we're all tempted. And, and we're all going to face discontentment at one point in our life. Maybe you're facing it right now. And I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. What's another action that we typically take when we're under discontentment? So the, one of the second uh, actions is that we, we start deflecting. Mm. So we look at the issue, we look at problems, and, and we see, or actually we, we see things, and we see people as the problem. Right. So we're starting to deflect. It's not about us. It's, there's nothing wrong with me. It's, it's this thing. It's my job. It's the car I drive. It's the house I live in. It's, maybe it's the spouse I marry. It's, you know, um, uh, the, the place that I'm living. Maybe it's the, the whole thing. Let's just you kind of pick up and move on. Yeah. Um, so we start to blame other people, and we see the faults in other people, and we see the faults in other things rather than looking at ourselves and trying to, to so figure good. out what's going on within ourselves. That's so good. And I have a thought to share on that. A lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, our projection, what you and I are projecting onto others is a result of, of the deflection that we're dealing with ourselves. Thank you for the great amen. And a lot of times it's easier, our tendency as adults is to shift and deflect and think that if someone else will be better, if something will be different in my life, if I get more money, if I have a new spouse, or this, or this, or this, then everything will be better. In counseling, we call that magical thinking, and it's irrational. It's not true. It's, 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 it's mystical, and it's, it's, it's magical. And we think that if we have just this thing, then poof, everything is better. But how many know that's not true? But it's, it's typical... And it's easy for you and I to go down that road instead of uh, really getting personal and letting God move deep within us. And what's another action that we typically do under discontentment? So it's, it's uh, self-deception or, or deception. So we start to deceive ourselves and, into thinking and believing that, that that thing that we're seeking after then becomes now the thing that we hope for and the thing that we believe yeah. will uh, fulfill our need. So, so we start putting our hope in that, that thing. Uh, whatever it might be, the thing that we've been seeking for, the thing that we've been grasping after, uh, the thing that we think that, you know, this is this person's problem or it's this, this thing, so I'm going to change it. Yeah. So we're going to start making some external changes and start putting that hope in that thing that if we just do this one thing, yeah. now that's what's going to ha make me happy. Yeah. And my hope is now fully in that change or fully in that person or fully in that thing and no longer uh, in the hope of right. Christ. It's really putting a hope in something Versus putting a hope in someone who is Jesus. But this is, this is typical for all of us, right? It's not just someone that maybe doesn't know Christ or someone that's new to Christ or I'm a seasoned Christ follower. It doesn't matter. The reality is that this is a challenge that every one of us face. And the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, wrote, contentment with godliness is great gain for a reason. And the wrestling that we deal with is really this space inside of our soul where we all want God. Only God can fill it. But if we're honest, it's hard to let God fill it. And this is where discontentment comes from. So personally, uh, Chad, how did you act out of this in your life? So I, I felt like I exemplified this definition, that, that restlessness, you know, that restless desire, a craving for something that, you know, I didn't have. So I had this restlessness, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point where, 
I'm starting to grasp out. I'm trying to see, well, maybe this will, maybe this will make me feel better, or maybe this will help. Maybe, uh, you know, changing, uh, you know, changing jobs or changing locations. Maybe, uh, you know, picking up and moving on and doing something different. Um, you know, it's just starting to think. You know, let's. It's it's the job. It's it's the boss. And again, uh, you know, if if anyone is online, if they're listening, they're watching. <laughs> I love Envisage. I enjoy working there. I enjoy what I do. So, um, just want to put that out there. Uh, but no, it, you know, I start to blame the job. It's, I, I'm not satisfied with this job. There's a dissatisfaction. I'm not satisfied with what I'm doing anymore, so I, I need to change something in my job. I need to uh, talk to my boss and figure, you know, let's just make a change. Maybe, maybe it's my spouse. I start blaming my spouse and say, you know, she just doesn't understand me. She's not really understanding what's going on so and good. how I feel about things. So and, good. You know, and then it's my kids, you know. I mean, if, man, if my kids would just listen and if they would not get lost at the fair, that would be Twice. awesome. Twice. So, you know, it's, again, starting to, to blame other things and try to figure out, okay, I, if I just make a change, if I can just change this thing, I'll take this out of here and put this in here and trying to figure it out and figure out how to put that piece in that puzzle. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, it was just not leading anywhere. At the end of every day, I'm still feeling empty and still feeling like this restlessness. This is not, this yeah. is not resolving that feeling. Yeah. So good. And so I want you to think about, as he talked to me a few weeks ago and speaking this to me, I was, I was looking at my own life. I would ask you in this room and online to look at your life right now. Is there a restlessness, a yearning? There's nothing wrong with wanting more. Nothing wrong with wanting to achieve and wanting something better. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a discontentment that breeds grasping for something that's easily accessible that maybe is a counterfeit. We're talking about deflecting, thinking that someone else is the problem. And we're talking about ultimately coming under uh, a self-deception or deceiving. And I want to ask you today, which one of these three are possibly affecting your life or a temptation for you to cave into? And I would hope that as you hear us speak on the resolutions, that you and I would take those steps and let the Holy Spirit begin to move in our life. Because notice verse 7, there's this peace that passeth all understanding, right? And that, and that peace will guard our heart and mind. Then in verse 8, under the resolution, he's talking about how. Meditate on these things, things that are pure, lovely, noble, all that stuff. Think about these things. Meditate on what is good. Focus on that so that the peace of God can move in your life. Easier said than done, but, uh, but this is the challenge that the Holy Spirit has for us. So, Pastor Chad, when you and I are determined to have the resolution with discontentment, what's the first thing we can do? So the first is it's, it's a, it's a four-letter word. It's difficult for us to, to take in. It's difficult for us to swallow at times. And it's talk. So we, we have to talk. There has to be conversation. Um, you know, I, I am a person, I, I internalize things a lot. I think about it. Um, but in the end, I have to come out and I have to talk about something. I have to find uh, someone that maybe have more wisdom than I do, has, has more experience in my life than, than I do. And so um, out of that conversation, uh, healing can come. And so I believe, really honestly believe that healing comes out of talking. Healing comes out of sharing your heart, yes. pouring it out, being open, being honest, and just bearing your soul with someone that you trust and can confide in to give you a different perspective, give right. you a different point of view. Because we're looking at it sometimes with tunnel vision. Right. And we need somebody's outside perspective and somebody's outside experience to speak to us and to break that thing open. So we, we have to talk. So good. And the scripture talks about in James that confess your issues, your sins, one to another, that you and I may be healed. And I believe what Rick Warren says, to be forgiven, we confess to God. But to be healed, there's an aspect from the scripture that we must talk to someone else. I practiced this this past week. On one day, I forget what day it was, I had a busy week, a lot going on, um, a lot of stress, not sleeping well. And one day, I just felt the pressure of it. So I was feeling angry. I was feeling tempted. I was all that stuff. So I called my best friend from Bible school. I said, hey, I need help. This is how I'm tempted today. This is where I'm struggling today. And he said, you know what? I'm feeling the exact same thing. I had to reach out. I had to say, I need help today. And I got that support. I'm not above you. And I'm not perfect. Ask my wife. <laughs> we all have to practice this. I really want to challenge everyone in this room. Pastor Chad's a great example. Pastor Chad... He talks to me. He talks to Pastor Kim. He has sought out other accountability in his life. He has pursued this point, and it has yielded benefits in him. In America, we hate this point because we swear we're Superman and Lone Ranger and Shaft and Jackie Chan all in one. But this is not the scriptures. I covered all the cultures right there, but this is not the scriptures. <laughs> Jesus, doesn't <laughs> Jesus doesn't want us to live that way. We have to reach out and have support 
so that we can walk this out. Because there's going to be days that none of us can do it alone. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage you to find someone and talk to them. It's spiritual. We believe in it. Pursue. The Bible says if you want to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. If you want to be connected, you have to step out and be connected. Don't sit there, please, and say, well, no one knows me. No one knows my name. No one takes time for me. No one knows what I'm struggling with. If you would step out and, and agreciate yourself to others, then we would know. Let's keep going. Praise the Lord. I think that. What's the next one? Amen. So the next step after talking is really identifying. And that's what, again, talking helps us do. It helps us identify that problem. Right. We, we're able to connect with someone that is able to pinpoint the thing that right. we, we can't pinpoint on our own. Right. We, we, you know, we, seek, we seek to. We try to figure it out, but we can't figure it out on our own. So we need that help. So identifying the problem, identifying so good. Um, the steps that we can take to move forward after we identify that problem. And it's really, for me, you know, it's about accountability, being accountable, staying accountable, having someone in your life to be able to speak to you and to speak to that problem, mm -hmm. and, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to deal with you, deal with your heart, and, you know, uh, giving you the opportunity to, to work through those emotions and work through those, um, those thoughts. And... Uh, you know, one of the things is that our feelings, they might be very legit feelings. They right. might be very valid feelings. I, I, the, val the feelings I was having were valid and they were legitimate, but it, my emotions were going to cause me to go down the wrong path. My right. emotions were going to cause me to make the wrong choices. And I love that statement he just made. I'm going to read it again. So this is his thoughts. The feelings may be legit. We may have legit feelings in our marriage, the gap in our marriage, the gap in our parenting, the gap in our money, the... The, the sense of, uh, of hollowness and relationships maybe from cultural situations that's just kind of flighty. That's all may be true. But if we don't harness our emotions, our emotions can cause us to make a mistake. And he has some great thoughts here. I want to read it to you. We must be aware of our emotions. Then we must be able to sift through our thoughts so that we know the action we could take. Everyone, please listen to me in this room. Front to the back, everyone. We have to be real with ourselves and God. We have to know what we're feeling and why we're feeling it so the Holy Spirit can move in our life. I don't teach you here to be a pseudo-spiritual. Everything is great. I love God. Ah! Be in reality. Right now, man, life is hurting. Let me even be more, you may not like this you know, reference. Right now, life sucks. Yet the Holy Spirit of God is greater than my reality. And he can move in my life and shape me and mold me and supersede what I'm going through. And so I want to encourage you to talk to someone. We provide that here. We advocate counseling. I go to counseling, you know, and, and it helps me. I, and, and the Holy Spirit's my counselor, right? I do both. I have both. But I advocate that. I want to encourage you to identify where you're at. And then what's the third thing we can do? So the third thing is, is ultimately, again, another difficult Thing to do and to work out, but it's to trust. Right. Ultimately, we have to trust and rely on God. He is our source, and we have to believe that yes. He knows us. Right. You know, he, he knew us before we were even formed in our mother's womb, and so we have to know He does have a plan for our lives, and it's, and it's really, in a, in a lot of ways, it's surrendering ourselves to that, to that plan yes. and trusting that He knows our name, He knows our location. Uh, you know, he, he has not forgotten us. He knows who we are, and so uh, for putting our trust fully in Him which is, is a tough thing to do. I don't say that as like it's just, you know, some word. It is a, it's a difficult action step. It's a difficult thing to do to fully trust in God because what is, is that? It, it takes, um, you know, a lot of things out of our hands and puts it in God's right. hands. And so we think, you know, I'm a Mr. Fix-It guy. I want to fix everything. I want to I wanna make it work. I want to put the puzzle just in the right piece. But I have to fully trust on God and rely on him. So good. I want to read a couple of statements to you that Chad had me, you know, when he was talking to me. We must be content... Easier said than done. We must be content with where we are. We must be content with who we are. Peace follows thanksgiving. So when you and I are thankful, peace follows being thankful. Discontent follows forgetting. So when you and I choose to forget, remember verse 8, think on these things, pure, lovely, noble, you know, just, all those things. Think on them. 
when you and I forget, we think about what God isn't doing, we think about what isn't working out, we think about what they have, what we don't have, we're ticked off and we're thinking about all this stuff, discontentment gets fueled by those attitudes. But when you and I choose to be thankful for what God's done and we choose to trust Him where we're at, then peace follows those steps and those actions. Amen? Amen? Chad, how did you personally walk out these resolutions in your life? So, you know, so I'm thinking, again, I mean, I'm thinking, okay, it's a new house. You know, my, my wife will be happy if we get a new house. Well, ha- well it'll be bigger. It'll be great. The, you know, kids have more room. Uh, maybe I do need to change jobs. Maybe I didn't even pick up and, and move into a new state. I don't know. Maybe, it's, maybe this whole, just a whole change, environmental change will do me some good, will do yeah. us all some good. But I really had to come down to, again, identifying, being accountable, talking, and, uh, you know, I had to have the con- hard conversations, you know, had, you know, meetings with Pastor, uh, Pastor Kim, Pastor Renee, Pastor David, Pastor Summer, uh, allowing to be open to my accountability partner, mm-hmm. just pouring out my heart and, and working through that conversation, identifying what that thing is in my life that is, is really causing this restlessness. And in the end, coming to an understanding of trusting God. And the fact, uh, fact of the matter was I wasn't really trusting God with my life. And I had this, um, this view of God as this far off distant father who was, you know, I, have to, I had to prove myself. I had, there were certain things I had to perform, uh, you know, things that I had, kind of hoops that I had to jump through to be able to get his acceptance. And so I'm dealing with that and realizing that ultimately it came down to the fact that I didn't love myself. So good. And Jesus spoke in, our, in the word and he said that, you know, one of the, great, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Mm-hmm. And he said the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And that's the part that I was dealing with is that I wasn't, I wasn't really loving myself. Wow. So how could I love my neighbor? How that's could so I love good. God? Because so I, I, was, I was struggling with just a love for myself so and acceptance of who I was and who I am. That's good. And out of, that, out of that, the resolution for me came that if all I'm called to be is a Christ follower, if all I'm called to be is a husband and a father, that's then good. that's my calling, and that's what I'm going to do, and that's who I am, and that's who God has called me to be. That's so good. I love that statement. It, and, and you said in the other services, you have dreams and visions. Yeah. They're not happening right now. But, you're, but through this process, you are content right. with where you're at. Amen. Yes. Yep. He's that's, content. Yeah. I want, you to think about, I want you to think about that, though, for our lives before we close. In closing, I want you to think about this. That it's possible for you and I. Everything's working out or nothing's working out. Content. Everything we feel God has for our life is happening or we're not seeing anything happen. Content. Everything around us is coming together and we're successful and yeah, everything is coming apart. Either way, content. At peace. I love what he was saying there that he's to the point that if God has called him to love his wife, to be obviously a child of God, to love Elaine and love his four kids, and that's what it is, and to raise them up, and maybe they go on and do what he's seen. He's cool with that. Folks, that's a huge place to get to. Please hear this message today. I believe for me, when he's speaking this to me at the sandwich shop, I was like, man, I'm getting bombs dropped on me because I want more contentment. If we're honest in this room, a lot of us need more contentment with where we're at right now what God's doing right now, it's okay. Because God knows who we are. And if I trust God, I'll, I will be naturally inclined to thank God because He knows me. It's going to work out. It just may not work out the way I thought. You know, a lot of times God gives us what we need, not what we want. Amen. Aren't you glad you came to church today? <laughs> but this is what, this is, this is, we're not going to lie to you. This is, this is the nitty-gritty. And so Chad, I know his life. He's walked this out. And so in closing today, as we get ready to respond to God, what area of your life would you like the Holy Spirit, even what we sung today, to breathe on you and to give you a peace-filled life? Not to judge you, me included. It's easy for all of us to grasp, deflect, enter into deceiving ourselves that someone else, this is this and that. And it's, it, at times it's harder to talk. It's harder to be willing to identify. And it's challenging to trust. But I ask you today in this room and online, will you and I take those next steps and say, yes, God, I want a peace-filled life. Jesus, help me 
Jesus, come into me. Jesus, I'm yours where I'm at right now, no matter what is or isn't happening around me. And so today, what is those areas? Which one of these resolutions can you take? Is it talking? Is it identifying? Is it, is it trusting? Whatever that is, I want to encourage you to take your next step. Maybe your next step today is to have 21 days straight where you pray every day. Maybe that's one minute, two minutes, three minutes every day. There's no judgment here. Do it. Use this prayer card in just, you know what, 21 days. I want to do 21 days in, in, in the 1st of August where I'm going to talk to God every day and somehow he's going to talk to me and my life's going to get even better than what it is right now and I'm going to have God and more in my life. And I shamelessly ask you, maybe it's joining a life group because, you know, we don't know we need community until we need community. And maybe it's going to build. Who knows what it is. Maybe it's something totally different. But whatever your next step is, I want to encourage you to do it and let the process of the peace-filled life come into your life and my life and let Jesus have his way. Let's give Pastor Chad a great hand. Great stuff today. Great testimony. Great example. If you don't mind, go and stand to your feet in this moment. You online can bow your heart. You watching on Facebook can bow your heart. And I hope that you would join me today. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday when I had to reach out for help. I hope you would join me in humility. I do my best to lead you in humility. We all need Jesus the same, folks. And none of us is exempt. And we all need the grace of God every day that we live. And he is there to help us. As your head is bowed, we do this to respect everyone because people are at different places. And we at City want to respect that and honor that for each person, each individual. So right now in this moment, in this room and online, you would say, Pastor Dave, I've never received Jesus. This is simply asking the Son of God, Jesus, into your life. And he lives in you by the Holy Spirit. And he's with you every day, the days you get it, the days you miss it. You know, when you feel it, when you don't. All that stuff, he's there every day. You can't make him leave you. He's going to stay with you. And he will love you through it all. And you would say you've never done that. Or you would say you have done that. But for whatever reason, there's a disconnect. There's a gap. And you're not close to God as you want to be. And you want that to change today. In this moment, if that's you, raise your hand right now. I want to pray for you to receive Jesus. God bless you. 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 And it's great. God bless you. God bless you. Seven people coming to Jesus. The eight people. I love it. That's the power of the Lord. That's the power of God. Keep your head back a little bit longer. As I do often, I'm going to raise my hand already because this spoke to me at the sandwich shop three weeks ago. And you would say today, Pastor Dave, I want the Holy Spirit to begin to give me a peace-filled life. I want contentment. I want to battle discontentment. Uh, and I want to step out and talk, if that's the step. I want to identify. I want to trust God. I want to step out. It may not be in a day. It may be day by day. But I'm going to be willing. I want to have a peace-filled life. If that's you, uh, please raise your hand with me and join me as I see your response to God. But thank you so much for responding. It's great. Follow me so no one's left out. And please say, Lord Jesus, my heart is yours. And I give you all of me. Please forgive me for anything wrong in my life. I choose to trust you. I choose, I choose, I choose to give you my heart, all of me. By the Holy Spirit, give me courage to have a peace-filled life. I crush discontentment. I'm thankful, I'm grateful, I'm peace-filled in the name of Jesus. Father, I bless every person in this room and every person online. And I ask you to help me, help me so much, help all of us so much to be filled with gratitude and thanksgiving, to come to the point where we're content with who we are, where we are, what you're doing at this moment. And our trust grows in you, Jesus. Help us, Holy Spirit, to walk with you. And help us to expel torment, anxiety, fear, competitiveness. And help us to receive the peace that passeth understanding. 
and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Everyone said, let's give him a great hand clap of praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. So I'm going to ask the prayer team to join me here at the altar. Come down, guys. And here's what we do if you're new. We have response time. We let you respond to God. We value that here at City. Uh, so before we go, everyone has a chance to respond to God as they feel comfortable, as they feel led. And so if you receive Jesus today, I really want to encourage you to come into the front. We give you a Bible that has easy answers for complicated questions. It's set up different than normal Bibles. So please come down and get it. If you want a Bible and that sounds like something you want, you can come down and get one too. We want to help you walk this out every day. If you want to take communion, you're more than welcome to. You and your family can do it on your own. You can walk to the back or come down to the front. If you want to sit in your seat, that's fine. If you want to come down for prayer just in general, that's fine. Today, we're going to play a music video of a great worship song called 10,000 Reasons. And after about five minutes or so, my brother Josh will come up and he'll dismiss us. We'll have a great week and then I will greet you out in the foyer with Pastor Chad. If you want prayer, come down the middle aisle. If you want communion, walk back or come down the side aisles. And I pray as we do that, we're fortifying what we heard today in our life and the Holy Spirit is going to move. May the Lord bless you. May his uh, face shine upon you. May he be good to you. May he be gracious to you. May he look upon you. And may he give you peace. And for this message, may he make us all have peace beyond understanding for a peace-filled life. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Let's respond to God.